What's up, guys? Welcome to the Lost Ark Waiting Room, Episode 2. This is Ayulol, and I'm back with Reinforce and Signum. What have you guys been up to? Yo, what's up, Ayu? Uh, not much. Playing a lot of PoE, Path of Exile lately. 3.15 is a little scuffed because of all the nerfs and stuff, but still having a lot of fun. Rolled three characters so far, and yeah, aside from that, I've actually been watching... And reading a lot of Lost Ark stuff, uh, I've been watching some Gunslinger PvP guides and showcases. Pretty hype for the game, but kind of tempered hype because it looks like it's never fucking coming out. Always keep hope. For me, not so much Lost Ark stuff. Kind of the same, a lot of PoE. I'm playing my fourth character because my first three were pretty bad, but I'm experimenting with the new skills, so kind of knew that it was going to be bad. Finally decided to go play meta, a meta build, so it's going okay now other than that i've played a couple of games of dota just kind of getting back into it but very casually and uh, when i'm not clicking around in dota i'm playing apex legends you mean you're getting killed over and over again by seer well i can't see anything but they can't see me either wow seer picker complaining about seer what a world <laughs> it's pretty broken yeah I'm not playing it until they nerf it. <laughs> what about you, Ayu? What have you been up to? Been watching your stream lately? A lot of leveling? Yeah, I just hit 14-14 on my bard, and I'm waiting to get some more gold before I jump to the next tier, and I have to upgrade all my gear. Other than that, as we speak, maintenance is going on, and afterwards, Sorceress will be released. So I guess that's a good time for us to talk about Lost Ark news. And it is confirmed that we will not be getting Sorceress on the North American launch. Rocks, the developer, said on Steam, we currently only have 15 classes planned for launch. The 15th class has been dot 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 teased, but I can confirm it's not Sork. We will be adding the rest of the classes to the game over time. And so dot 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 teased means we're probably getting Striker, as most people will have heard by now. No Sorceress. Yeah, I, I mean, I expected as much. Kind of going back to the thing that I said in episode one, I don't think that um, that there's any reason for them to use one of their like new hype classes when the hype of the game release should be able to carry them. So Striker coming out made a lot of sense in from that perspective, and I think Sorceress not being included in the launch uh, will follow that that trail yeah and i think small point to also consider is i think it's good risk mitigation i don't know if that's part of their decision making but releasing a new class on a new server during a new release is kind of risky if they ever have to fix anything about it or or nerf something kind of looks bad if it's a new release but this way they avoid it once it's been ironed out or if they don't need to iron anything out then they can just easily release the class to the other servers it's a lot of hopium expecting <laughs> lost arcana to come out anytime soon our first week of October timeline is looking pretty grim. Never lose hope. Well, Lost Ark Taiwan just got announced too. Are they going to get their launch before we do? That would be hilarious. I don't, I mean, I don't think so. You would imagine that it'd be Simul or at worst the uh, NA first. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to announce it now, maybe around the same time or yeah, simultaneously. Honestly, I think we've done enough speculation. At this point, we can just wait, and when it comes out, it comes out. Lost Ark Waiting Room. Episode 2. <laughs> We're in it. And the Sorceress teaser came out. Did you guys check out the Sorceress trailer? Yeah, I watched the Sork trailer. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I like the tripod elemental switching stuff. It looks like a classic caster, kind of in the vein of Final Fantasy Black Mage. Looks cool. I'm, I'm fully assuming that Reinforce will switch on to it the instant she comes out. Hey, I said it last episode, and I'm going to say it again. I'm instantly swapping the second she comes out. I don't even care how far my main is. Well, you were a Black Mage main in Final Fantasy, so... Yeah. I mean, I started Black Mage, and then I ended up playing Ninja, and then I decided to try playing a healer later. What was that class called with the cards? Astrologian? I can't imagine you healing in raids, to be honest. I was pretty bad, and you can ask uh, our healer from the, the same guild. <laughs> Nothing but complaints. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I think that's the good time for us to segue to our, our first topic, which is going to be all about classes in Lost Ark and, and classes in MMOs in general. 
there were a lot of people asking us to do class breakdowns and talk about classes. And I think in the scope of our podcast, class breakdowns might be a little difficult, but I thought we would cover some other aspects of classes because there is a lot to unpack here. This is a big topic. We're talking about DPS and healers. And one of the things that people seem to ask right away when they see this game or when they see any new MMO is about the Holy Trinity. Is there DPS, tanks, and healers? So Holy Trinity, do you like it? Do you think it's needed? I think the Holy Trinity is something that you have to consider very carefully when you're developing your game, because by going with the Holy Trinity archetypes, healer, tank, DPS, you're limiting the design space that your um, that your raids or combat can can kind of explore. When you have the Holy Trinity system, there's only certain ways that you can like control the um the flow of the raid and the players and dictate difficulty when only certain people can do certain things you have to like create mechanics that test only those people at certain amount of time so for example like you have a big one shot coming and your tank has like a raid wide mitigation that's the only way you can do it you you have to hit the raid wide mitigation there whereas in a system like lost ark from the raids that i've been watching it's a lot more open-ended you can expect more from every single player in the raid and the mechanics don't single out certain classes but on the flip side some people really love being in those defined roles and the fact that they kind of have to be a jack of all trades and be able to to dodge if like for tank mains they they can't just stand there and and eat damage and and rely on a healer to top them up they have to like engage more with don't stand in the red circle stand in the green circles etc so i i don't think it's a bad or good thing. It just needs to really be carefully tied into the design space of the game. Yeah, I, I would expand on that as well. I mean, I said it last episode. I, I think the old type of like tab targeted raids and MMOs is really restrictive on game designers and what they can do with a, a raid in terms of mechanics and what they can do. And things like WoW, Final Fantasy, where it's not just tab targeting, even your bosses are lock targeted to usually your tanks or, or whoever has aggro and you're maintaining aggro. It's very limiting in terms of what you can do to control how the fight goes. Like the tank is always going to be kiting the boss around to certain areas if they need the boss to go to a certain circle. DPS are just mindlessly mashing their their cooldowns in like a certain a very specific order because every class has their own rotation. At least from this many years of that style of MMO, I, I feel like it's gotten very stagnant in, in terms of what you can do. So with something like uh, Lost Ark where you're more focused on dodging, not getting hit, but also 30 different mechanics coming at you at, at the same time, I, I think it opens the door for more creative fights and mechanics instead of just your typical don't stand in these circles, but then stand in these circles kind of raids i'm kind of of the opposite where i actually enjoy having the holy trinity i think i'm one of those people that you talked about who enjoys having a role for example i enjoy knowing that i am this person and i this is my job and i am very good at that job so if i'm a healer the whole raids survivability falls on me if I don't do my job properly, people die. And if you're a tank, if I mess up, the boss loses aggro, we die. If I'm a DPS, I don't do enough DPS, the boss enrages, we die. So it's kind of it kind of gives everyone a sense that they're contributing in this certain way. And for me, a long time ago when Guild Wars 2 came out, they also didn't have a Holy Trinity and, and it was just, oh, everyone heals with potions, similar to Lost Ark. And I remember I, when I was playing WoW and I, I was a, a Holy Paladin at that time, so a healer. I remember seeing that and thinking, well, that sounds pretty shit. I don't want to be in a game where everyone just takes care of themselves and bandages and, and drinks potions and, and whatnot. So 
I, I kind of feel I'm not sure. I agree on the fact on in the fact that it makes raid designs more fluid, but you can have that kind of design in a Holy Trinity too, right? Because you have mechanics that oh, I need this person to do it. So when that person goes to do it, they feel special in a way. Yeah, I totally I totally understand what you mean, and that's why I said that that I think that Trinity is restrictive, but not that it's bad. You can have good gameplay in a restrictive design space. It's restrictive, but it's not bad design or poor design. But I think after this many years of playing that style of MMOs, it's something kind of fresh and new. I know you mentioned Guild Wars 2, and I don't remember why that game was so bad, considering that I, I really liked the first Guild Wars. But the first Guild Wars was very Holy Trinity. I think one interesting thing that you were enforced have been saying is the Trinity in the, uh, in the context of a tab-targeted MMO, whereas this is like a action RPG MMO where movement is fluid and pretty much everything is a skill shot. So I think if they wanted to like put a Holy Trinity system in, it still would have been interesting. Like it's it's not the healers just standing there and like casting heals onto somebody who's who's stationary and the DPSs are all just standing there pressing their button rotations. Like everybody is very mobile. Um, I think it would have been difficult to put a Trinity system in that because like imagine you're a healer and you have to like hit a skill shot <laughs> to heal one of your party members, right? It could be extremely difficult to, to implement something like that. The only other game that we've played that was open like this was Terra. And Terra, if I recall correctly, did have the Holy Trinity. But in Terra, we never raided. We only we only ever did PvP, so... Well, Terra had lock-on heals. And Terra, Terra still had lock-on abilities. Right, right. Yeah, but e even when we were going through the the leveling of the story, if you were tank... We, none of us played a tank, but when you were tanking, you, it's not like a standard tank where you sit there and eat hits. You still had to dodge, and you still had to recognize patterns for bosses. You take as few hits as you can. Right, for sure. But yeah, you're right. I don't know how raiding was, because we only focused on PvP in that game. Yo, you never healed us anyway. <laughs> you, you heal yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you drop your drop your little mystic balls. I've I've already dropped heal balls. Oh my god, I fucking hated those things. <laughs> I was trying to like, I was charging up a big hit as a berserker and I needed a heal and you're like, yo, pick up this ball. And I turned my camera and it's <laughs> literally in Narnia. <laughs> I'm not going all the way to get that. I'm slow as fuck. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, Holy Trinity, to answer the question, I guess it's not needed. And whether you like it or not, I suppose that comes down to personal preference. In Lost Ark, though, after having played it for, I don't know, how many hours, I can say that I don't really miss it. I mean, I, I used to think that, especially when I played a healer, it was really satisfying being a healer and topping up your raid and keeping everyone alive. Sometimes you get these like clutch moments where you save someone's life and they go, oh shit, nice heal or, or whatever. And, and you kind of have that self-esteem that you did your job and you're really good at your job after playing lost ark you don't really have that kind of clutch heal moment but there are still other abilities that you can use to save people and it's it's kind of interesting because in lost ark i get the sense of achievement when the raid succeeds which is which is completely a hundred percent different from what i felt like during wow when i played wow i was kind of an elitist even if the raid succeeded if i wasn't doing my job really well like if i was a dps i wanted to be top dps if i was a healer i wanted to do clutch heals i wanted to have big healing and like top the meters and and i, I wanted to be name and lights kind of thing right but in lost ark it's weird when in lost ark when the raid succeeds i feel good we, we did it as a team there isn't as much ambition for me to stand out and be the mvp maybe i got older maybe i'm more mature is that it? <laughs> sure, you you tell yourself that. No, I think uh, that's a really good point because when in all my days of raiding, that was also my feeling. Like even if the raid failed, as long as I considered myself like top DPS, or if the meters told me I was top DPS, then it came away with at least a sense of accomplishment. But on, on the flip side of that, I guess the counter argument, or not argument against it, is um like the fear there is if your raid fails. And there's no, like, you don't get the rewards, you don't get the ti the cool title. Does it feel like a complete waste of time? Well, I, I mean, I don't see how it would be a waste of time. You get the experience, but if you're aiming to clear it and you don't clear it, obviously that's a waste of time. 
I mean, the gear is always the prize. Personal satisfaction is uh, just something to keep you up, to keep you warm at night. I think another thing I look forward to in a Lost Ark type of raid is that you have to learn the entire fight. I, I don't know about you, but when we played Final Fantasy, I only learned from like a DPS perspective or even drill down to if I was playing my ninja, melee back attacker's perspective or range black mage perspective. I, I didn't care about anything else. I don't care where the tank stands. I don't care where the healers stand. Just tunnel vision did my job. And if we wiped, I know it probably wasn't my fault if I didn't screw up. That's a good point. Uh, I also used to just learn my part only. And then <laughs> the only time when I would learn someone else's part is when we keep wiping. And then I wonder, all right, why are we wiping? What are you supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> the elitist talking you <laughs> right and that's that's what i that kind of feel is like what i was getting at when i was saying that the trinity is a limited design space for your players you can only target certain mechanics at certain archetypes everybody else is kind of just sitting there twiddling their thumbs while other people deal with the things that they need to deal with yeah and i used to be a huge min max sweaty meta cook and I would only care about playing the best thing, the most optimal rotation. But now I think I, I am a little bit older, but I, I think I'm still a sweaty tryhard at heart. I just think that Lost Ark is designed in a way that the systems that are in place, I don't want to say discourage min-maxing because you can never stop min-maxers. Like, min-maxers will be in every game. They're going to min-max the shit out of it. They're going to optimize every single 1% of DPS or, or whatever it is. In Lost Ark, first of all, Damage meters. No damage meters. Are they good or bad? And do we need them? I think damage meters are, they're just a tool and their interpretation is what is good or bad. I mean, even if Lost Ark had damage meters, every, every class plays so differently and has different windows. And from what I've seen, at least, all the raids are designed so differently that I don't think that any one class would top the DPS charts across the board. So honestly, in Lost Ark, I think DPS meters would be okay if they're not kind of folded into the toxic NA mentality where people start using them to ostracize people who are, aren't doing enough damage in their eyes. Yeah, that's not happening. If you put damage meters in NA, you're definitely going to get some toxic players telling other people, oh, what a scrub. Yeah, of course. I don't think they're necessary either, especially in Lost Ark. You're moving around so much, focusing more on dodging and actually completing the mechanics of a fight and kind of sneaking in damage here and there. And because it's not the Holy Trinity where the tank just keeps aggro and DPS can just go ham when, when they want, it's harder to kind of kind of like rank which classes do more DPS than others. So I, I think there's just too, too much variance to, to have it um, be reliable. Well, in every MMO, there's high mobility fights and stationary kind of training dummy tank and spank fights. But that doesn't really... I don't know if that's relevant to DPS meters in general, right? Three, we played summoners in Final Fantasy. I played a warlock in, in, in WoW. Those are like heavy dark classes. So in every fight with movement or multi-targets, we were always number one. And the damage meters, they were indicative of a class's potential DPS, right? And obviously that differs based on the mechanics. But people will still take a look at the sims, for example, on the training dummy, and say, oh, this class does 10% more damage than this class, this class does 5% more damage than this class. And, and I think just to make it clear, there are damage meters now in Korea f only for the training dummy room. I think the danger of that, especially in NA, is that people are going to take those standstill training dummy numbers and be like, oh, this is the best class, right? Or they're going to create like tier lists based on standstill training dummy DPS, which is... It's so counter to the way that Lost Ark seems to be designed. I think one counterpoint to that, though, is it would be very useful to figure out optimal rotations. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be doing your optimal rotation in any fight, but if you have that in mind at all times, then at least you know how, if you're playing a DPS class, how you couldn't get the most damage out of a fight in any situation, given any mechanic and the atmosphere in the korean server i mean the damage meters have been out for a while now and we have the numbers people people ran the sims the biggest whale in korea who spent over 600 or 700 thousand usd in the game compared all the classes even did the ranking but nobody will ever cut you out of a group because you're playing a certain class they'll cut you out of a group 
if you're if your engravings are dog shit and you obviously don't know how to build your character, but nobody will say, "Oh, that guy's playing X class, which does five percent less DPS." Nobody ever talks about that. I don't think I've seen that even once. That's not a thing at all. On NA, I I have my doubts, but just because I've played so many MMOs on on North America, I've played WoW at the top level. I've played Final Fantasy fourteen at the top level. People will do that, and I, and I'm kind of worried that we won't have that same mentality that Korean players have that. Any class is fine, as long as you're... They call it, uh, like, manner specs, which is, like, <laughs> you should build your character in a way that there's a, there's a certain public standard that if as long as you meet this minimum standard, which is not really unreasonable, then you're fine, as long as you don't suck. That's so funny. It, on, on inspect in Lost Ark, do you see tripods? You see the gear, and you see the engravings. Oh, okay. It's not as important because gear and engravings are the most important things. Yeah, I, I think there's no chance that NA becomes some sort of like Western Asian server where people just have good manners and treat each other nice. We can hope, but that's not the history for NA. <laughs> I th- I think that, that Lost Ark, it doesn't... Will it suffer from that though? Because the, the DPS ceilings for, for the classes, like they're not that far apart, right? Yeah, but that's never stopped people from discriminating based on 5% or 10% differences. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and I, I don't think it'll be based on DPS if it's Lost Ark. I think it's going to be more common to what you see in MOBAs like Dota, where <laughs> the person who died the most is probably going to get flamed the most. Yeah, but I mean, at that point, you're already in the raid, right? A lot of, I think a lot of the worst toxicity or elitism will come from when you're applying for a spot in the party finder and you don't get accepted because you're playing a quote-unquote inferior class. I, I really hope that that doesn't become the standard. Yeah, I, I, I don't want Lost Ark to have a Dragoon, like, from Final Fantasy. Wasn't Dragoon, like, OP? It was good. People just kept jumping off the map. <laughs> <laughs> True. So on that note, then, what do you think about tier lists? Because I've seen a lot of tier lists floating around already, and I get that there there's a tier list for PvP. Objectively, some classes are better at certain kinds of PvP than others. But for PvE, I feel like tier lists, DPS meters, all this stuff just promotes that kind of unhealthy attitude. So tier lists in MMOs in general and in Lost Ark, what do you think? Coming from a Metacuck, let me tell everybody... Fuck tier lists. They're they're so bad. And the the worst thing about tier lists, this is coming from I guess a POE standpoint, or or games that are more free in terms of uh, build choices and gear choices. I, I hate that tier lists really stifle creativity. That's the worst thing about them. Like people don't even give these classes a chance, and as a result, those classes don't develop into their potential. Lost Ark's a little different because like the writing's on the wall for a lot of the classes. You know, there's not really that much in terms of build diversity or, or whatever. But just in general, I think tier lists are, are awful. And the fact that people play classes or or characters that they don't like is the most hilariously bad thing to me. I honestly think the only thing tier lists are good for are for people that don't want to think about what they want to play or have no idea uh, what they want to play. Say like they just came across Lost Ark and tomorrow's the release and they just can't be bothered to sift through videos then a very lazy way to pick a class that you want to play is to just find a tier list look at the s and say that's it well i'm not gonna lie i'm also a hardcore metacuck and the first thing i did when i was thinking when i was starting lost arc was i looked up a lost arc tier list because the thought of playing some d tier class just i couldn't live with myself <laughs> it's just ingrained in my blood to be a a, a try hard min maxer but every Back then, I mean, still and even now, most of the content for Lost Ark is, comes from Korea, and I speak Korean, so that's the kind of content I looked. And I was actually infuriated because I couldn't find a single goddamn tier list about the game. I was thinking, why is there no tier list for an MMO with 15 or 16 classes? How do I know which one's good and which one's bad? And the more videos I watched, the more I realized it's because Koreans don't even think about tier list for PvE, especially. All the class recommendation videos I found were, this is cl- this class, it plays like this. It has these good things and these bad things. If you like doing X, you'll enjoy this class. And, and, and so after watching enough videos, I realized, oh, so you can just play whatever you want, basically. 
That's hilarious. And I and I honestly love that. I mean, I have seen tier well, I, I've mostly seen PvP tier lists. PvE tier lists uh, in Lost Ark don't really seem to be a thing because as I mentioned before, like raid mechanics will sometimes just favor certain classes uh over other classes. Yeah, keep in mind we're talking about PvE only. PvP, there definitely there definitely are tier lists per PvP, but that's a different topic. And we'll we'll actually talk a lot about PvP um a bit later on. But PvE wise there will be tier lists. People are going to make them. There's nothing we can do about that. But I personally, I don't like them. I don't think it promotes a very healthy community. For most people, it won't really matter. But I think that some people will take that information and use it in a way that doesn't promote good manners or, or doesn't promote positive, positive energy, you know? <laughs> positive vibes only. Yes. Full disclaimer, when you told me about Lost Ark, I also tried to look for a tier list right away and basically went through the same experience. I couldn't find one for PvE. But what I did instead was I just looked at the classes on the website and looked at the types I usually want to play, which are like magic dealers and, and edgy assassins and thieves, and just picked the one that I feel like I would enjoy more since there were no tier lists. For most games, if there is one, I usually... I don't go straight to the S tier. I'll look at it, but if I don't like how it plays, then I'm not even going to pick the top tier class. I'll probably pick something in the A tier that I would enjoy playing more. Yeah, same. I mean, I like being a top tier character, but I don't ever need to be like S class, S plus plus plus, uh, absolute best spec. So, yeah, I don't know. The tier lists are just... I just hate how, how toxic they'll get in, in communities and people like, honestly, people will play classes that they're not suited to and lose that 5 to 10% um, DPS increase that they would have gotten anyways. It's just, it's awful. Well, you also are pretty good at Super Smash Brothers Melee, right? And and you got out of pools, so I'm just going to say you're pretty good. Wait, where did where did you get this information? I never made it out of pools. Oh, well, you almost made it out of pools. I was there. He did not make it out of pools. All right, well, you're the best out of all three of us, so there is a definitely there's a huge tier list in in melee, right? Yes, yeah. But the thing with melee is the tier list continues to shuffle depending on who plays which character and how good they are. Fox is no longer a dominant top tier, and Pikachu is no longer a dominant D tier and has moved up solely because of Axe. Mm -hmm. And I think this is another kind of important point with tier lists, especially if you're talking about something like melee, there's also theoretical tier lists versus practical tier lists of like what is actually achievable. Because to your point, Fox is, I don't think anybody would argue against Fox being the best character in melee, but can you play like that? over the course of a tournament no like most people can't nobody's really shown that they can dominate an entire 48 hour tournament playing like that and not having their hands fall off and i think again speaking to the point of standstill dummy dps that's another thing the class that has the highest single rotation dps might not actually be the top tier because there, there there's never a chance for you to actually get that off. I'm speaking out of my ass, but on the beta, I played, or the alpha, I played Soul Fist. And watching Soul Fist videos, you charge up your spirit bomb for like five seconds. How many how many moments in an encounter are you actually going to be able to do that? And you're certainly not going to be able to do it off of cooldown every single time, right? So if that theoretical DPS is on a standstill target and it's not applicable to anything you ever see in a Lost Ark raid, then that that tier list is is pointless. It's meaningless. I agree with your point, but just in case there are Solfus mains or people that want to play Solfus in the listening to this, you definitely can do that. You just have to be good and, and know the boss timings and the boss mechanics. Which which again brings us back to the original point, which is player skill is more important than tier list because the the difference between classes is very minimal. The game is extremely well balanced in terms of PVE between classes. Obviously, there is a tier list. Supports are at the top. And then everyone else is at the bottom. So other than that, <laughs> wow. between DPS classes, it's more or less the same. It really comes down to how well you play your character, how well you know your class. I mean, Sharpshooter or a Hawkeye was at the bottom for the long time, and then it got a big buff. So even though a tier list might exist, it's not going to stay the same for long. And look at all the Reaper mains that, that rolled Reaper in Korea because Reaper was 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 quite good. It was I, 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 I don't want to say broken, but... 
you know, it was damn good. And a lot of people played Reaper, and then Reaper just ate a huge nerf, and now all those Reaper mains are, you know, crying or re-rolling or whatever. So I guess we can talk about the next point, which is picking your main and what about re-rolling? Because re-rolling in Lost Ark, especially right now for if you're playing on the Korean server, if you get up to tier 3 or end game content, it is expensive to get there. Like, it takes a lot of resources to build one character up to end game 1415 and beyond. So 1500 end game Legion rates. Rerolling is not something you can just do at any time you want, right? It's a huge commitment. There are a lot of people that they're still, why is Hawkeye not popular even though he got a lot of buffs and he's really good now? Because people can't afford to reroll. Once you pick a main at that kind of tier, you are kind of committed. I mean, rerolling is not for the faint hearted in Lost Ark. So. What do you think about people who tend to re-roll to the flavor of the month class or the meta class? Well, you stole all my points. I was actually just going to bring up this point because I, I did know that Lost Ark has kind of this cyclic meta where no DPS or no class in general will stay at the top for an extended period of time. So the, for the people who do base their choices on what is the top of the tier list at the moment, you have to be really careful and be like you have to they have to pick a character that if suddenly they fall to the bottom of the tier list, you're still okay with playing. Because if you keep starting new characters every time the tier list changes, you're never going to make it up uh, to the gear score necessary to, to play these endgame reigns. Just whip out your credit card. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so speaking of that, just for the just for everyone who, who doesn't follow Lost Ark community, Lost Ark Korean streamers especially, something really crazy happened in this last week. Like a kind of monumental event so this one korean streamer called han dong Sok, he went on a quest to carve a 9-7 ability stone so a 9-7 stone is pretty hard to get actually a 9-7 stone means you have nine points in one engraving seven points in another and it's random so you have to keep buying stones and each time you carve one point into it it's only a percentage chance i won't get too much into ability stone carving now but he spent four days straight streaming and carving stones. And he spent, I think at the end, he spent around $20,000 US dollars to carve this stone. <laughs> and his luck at some points was complete dog shit. And actually on the, on, the, on the one that he succeeded, it was crazy. He carved a 9-7 stone with zero debuffs, which is, it was a really hype moment. He was swearing and losing his mind. But that's the kind of thing, right? If you're unlucky, you are really unlucky in RNG. And, and unlike upgrading your gear, carving stones, there is no pity. So it's the great equalizer. Even the biggest of whales can fail and you can succeed on the first try. My point that I want to make here, though, about re-rolling is that think about doing that and then you want to re-roll. Well, that means you need a whole new set of gear because all these things are, are bound to your character, right? Once you carve a stone, that's it. You can't trade it. So it's not easy to re-roll is my point. And if you're one of those people like I used to be who only played the best class, I think I was a warlock and then I, I was raiding and then I realized, oh, well, rogues just have better damage and uh, they don't even need to play better than me. So I re-rolled a rogue. I was top DPS. And then later on, another class was top. I think Death Knight's were OP. So I was like, well, shit, should I make a Death Knight? And, and it's kind of this endless cycle where you're chasing a meta that moves way faster. I mean, even in WoW, it was relatively easy to re-roll and level up and uh, gear up an alt because you could just get carried. But in Lost Ark, you are gated by a lot more than just getting carried or not. There's a lot of time, effort, resources that goes into your character. So I don't even think it's possible to chase a meta in Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. I guess one question that I have on like a related topic is how quickly do you think it becomes apparent what the playstyle of any one given class in Lost Ark is? Because like even though there isn't the the Trinity, there are still classes that cater to, towards archetypes, right? Like the Gun Lancer is, I guess, the closest thing to a tra traditional tank in Lost Ark that there is. And then there are the supportive sort of healers and buffers that Bard Paladin is. And then even in the DPS from the from the two that I've played, Soul Fist and Gunslinger played completely different. Soul Fist was like sort of a bruiser, like combo heavy, and Gunslinger is like this mid 
mid-range, very highly mobile, dance around the target, get a lot of back uh, back shots in. So each class having their own identity, like how quickly does that come out? Because I would really feel for people who invest all this time, get to like tier two, tier three rating, and then realize, oh shit, I kind of don't like the way this class plays in in raids. Yeah, and to that point, I think that it's kind of hard to get a sense for the the class as you're leveling just because there's so much that changes at end game tripods gear engraving that the way the class feels while leveling may not be the way that the class feels in raids but on the flip side luckily for us when north america and eu launches we'll all be in tier one including our alts and what that means is that as soon as you get your alt to level 50 which shouldn't take more than 15 hours if you're trying to play it quickly you are at end game uh, because as soon as you hit 50, you are in tier 1, you can start doing tier 1 content. It's a little different on Russia and KR because we're in tier 3. So getting your alt to 50 doesn't mean anything because you are far away from being able to play that class in, in what would be considered endgame rates. And so for us, I think the beginning of the North America EU servers will be a great time to play a lot of different classes and to try them all out at endgame. Because in tier 1, that is the easiest to bring up your alts and play them. As we get more into the, the length of our Lost Ark lives on, on the North America servers, it'll be harder and harder to re-roll, even though they will come out with catch-up mechanics and so forth. But at the beginning, just play a lot of different classes. I don't, I can't, it's hard to say exactly how long it will take for you to get a feel for the class. And, and obviously every class is different. But the more you experiment, the better it is. I, I would say that you should probably pick a few classes that you're interested in. You're going to have to make alts anyway and play them. And by the time you get to that point where you need to start to commit more heavily to one character, I think you will have a deeper understanding of the game and you will be able to pick your main. Yeah, and I think that's like really good explanation of it because coming from me, I'm like a serial main mainer. Like I pick what it doesn't matter if it's fighting games, MMOs, like whatever. I usually just pick one character and that's my character. But for Lost Ark, not only does every class play so differently that there's a lot of opportunity to explore different play styles, but I, I really... I'm not that sure of what I want out of the game yet. And in terms of the raids, like I don't know how all of the classes play in the raids. Like I've played Gunslinger and Solfus, as I mentioned before, and my gut feel is that I like Gunslinger for what she's capable of in PvP. But from a PvE standpoint, Solfist actually kind of was more fun. And I've been looking at more class guides and Blade actually really stands out to me as a really cool class because it's this like sustained DPS, stick onto the boss's ass as much as you can sort of playstyle. And that highly contrasts with Gunslinger's like stay the fuck away from it and, and snipe from a distance. So uh, despite being a serial main character player, I think I am going to be playing quite a few alts uh, in this game, which is pretty exciting. And uh, I guess the next topic I want to direct at you, Reinforce, is that a lot of people are concerned that the class they want to play isn't there on release. So land, there are a lot of Lance Master mains, a lot of Scouter mains, a lot of people who want to play Sorceress like you. So what do you what do you plan to do? Like if your main isn't there, what do you think about that? I, I was actually thinking about the same thing when Signal was talking. I I think, I mean, my plan now is to just play Summoner and then switch to Sorceress whenever she comes out. I, I, I kind of get what you're trying to say in that if, if you can't find something that you want to play now, it's kind of hard to compromise and and wait for uh, the class that you you might want to play later but i think you kind of have to suck it up <laughs> for me the summoner is not the the class i want to play right like i said I'm, I'm usually just like the big mage magic dealer type of player so sorcerers is definitely up my alley but obviously sorcerers is not out yet so i will settle for what is in my mind second best which is summoner and i think the advantage that you you've been constantly trying to um, trying to get across is that having multiple characters is not a big deal in fact it is more beneficial for you to have multiple characters and alts than to just tunnel vision and focus on one so taking advantage of the na release not going past tier one is i agree is a great time to just level a few alts and see if you can get a feel for the different classes and see if you can find one that you would like before t tiers two and three come out. When we get to the like late late game, like on Korean servers, it, it feels like it really is gonna suck if a new character comes, or a new class comes out, and 
you do want to switch. I am basing this on my Final Fantasy experience because like I played Black Mage for the entire first and I think second coil. When Ninja came out, I was thinking about it. I really liked it, but I didn't like the tedious or the amount of time I would have to put into leveling a new character. But eventually I did it and, and Ninja became my new main. But to do that in Lost Ark, especially as more content and more tiers come out, I feel like becomes less and less viable. Yeah, so I can kind of talk about that a little bit. First of all, I think you'll actually really enjoy Summoner because the Summoner in Lost Ark isn't a true Summoner where you you summon a lot of minions and then you go AFK. Just like how in Final Fantasy, the Summoner was more of a dot class than a summon class. I don't think we had we had like one summon and it was a pet. Um, the Summoner in Lost Ark has a lot of big flashy spells. Like Ancient Spear is the, one of the sickest spells in the game. You call down three massive flaming spears that do like crazy damage but other than that your point about re-rolling i think that is a somewhat concern that a lot of people have is that while it may not matter in tier one it matters more when we get to later tiers and as we get deeper and deeper into the content it becomes harder and harder to re-roll that's kind of what people might be afraid of but actually lost ark well smilegate and the director of the of lost ark you know, they're, they're pretty smart so we got to give them credit for that is that just like when sorceress is coming out tomorrow or today Whenever a new class comes out, they always give away a free jumping ticket. And a jumping ticket in Lost Ark basically lets you boost a character from creation all the way to the current content, but just a little before. So Sorceress comes out tomorrow, which means they're giving everyone a free jumping ticket. So if you, so if you started on the Korean server tomorrow, you could make a Sorceress and boost it all the way to item level 1302, which is tier 3. And you're not going to be in endgame raids right away but you are very close to the end game. So with a little bit of time, let's say a month or two, you could be at end game. They don't put you right there because then you get a lot of people who don't know the content and, and it kind of makes doing the content a little harder if you have a sudden influx of people who have no idea what they're doing. So I think it's a very good balance. They put you a step before the start line. So you have the time to learn the game, learn the class, learn the systems, upgrade your character, and they, they put you just far away enough that you have that leisure of not being thrust into the hardest content, but also close enough that you don't have to work your ass off to get to it. I, I honestly really like that mechanic. Those boosts, are they, they're not locked to the class that has just been released, right? Nope. So you get a ticket and you can use it on any character. Oh, that's cool. So that, that kind of alleviates a bit of worry for people who would want to reroll. Like if, if you ever do get one of those boost tickets, just save it until until a class that you do want to play comes along. Yeah. And, and the way it works is that this class has been teased and announced for a long time. So the people that wanted to play Sorceress knew this was coming a long time ago. So anyone that was seriously considering playing this character Character as a pseudo main or switching mains entirely, they have been saving up materials from that day that it was announced. So not only did you get a jumping ticket, they also have materials saved up to upgrade. So tomorrow there will be tons of sorceresses in the end game just because people have already been saving up stuff for months. And they don't have to pay a single cent, but if you wanted to, you could also pay money and, and boost your character. But with a little bit of planning, and it's very easy to do because they literally announce everything beforehand, you can switch mains. I don't want to say painlessly, but at least you don't have to spend you know thousands of dollars every time you want to switch your main if you, if you put in the time and save up materials. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the biggest ups upside is not having to do 15 hours of leveling for every character. God, you really hate leveling, don't you? <laughs> I, I don't like it, despite being the person that has rolled four different characters <laughs> this PoE league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think another important uh, distinction even further past what we're seeing happening on the Korean realms is that our server, NA, is never going to have, well, I, I don't want to say never, but most likely won't have classes that are like globally released, right? Like most of our classes will be battle tested on on the Korean server before they before we even get a whiff of it here. So you can you can watch Korean streamers or Korean players take that class through the motions, through all the all the raids and really get a sense of if it's something you want to play or not. Yeah, to an extent. I also don't know about never. I feel like at one point you never know what what, what might happen, but also watching and playing are, are not exactly the same. Uh, I think never is too strong of a word. It I I'm fairly confident that they do want to normalize the releases between all the servers because as a developer, it's tiring to have to keep track of different versions 
of the same thing all over the place. And two, I think it, it you do a disservice to the fans, kind of, if certain regions are always behind, uh, say, the Korean or Russian servers. Because it, it, in the end, it's an MMO, and you do want to be playing the cutting edge or doing the cutting edge raids along with everybody else not watching videos or having it spoiled for you some people do like that discovery and ex exploration aspect of a new raid yeah that's a good point so i i wouldn't say it would never be normalized yeah that's true like i, I know a lot of people who their fun in mmos is uh, a new raid drops and they hop on with their the progression group and they're like all right boys let's figure this shit out and if we're always behind then then na will never get that experience which i think would be a bit unfair this is a different point but that progression aspect is also one of the other equalizers for the anti pay to win argument or whatever you call it because some part of the balancing of that in korea is that well you have to figure out the mechanic the, the group that cleared the most recent raid that came out april shoot was a they had a very inferior gear relative to some of the bigger whales on the server i mean their their gear was still very good to enter but their group got the first clear because they were superior at problem solving so they figured out the mechanics and they got it done but for us that kind of that kind of layer of problem solving won't be there because everything is solved for us so while it's a different point let's quickly wrap up about picking your main i think you have time to experiment and if your class isn't there on release, don't really freak out too much. You can play a class that's similar. You can even play a class that's completely different so you don't burn yourself out. You can save up materials. And when the class that you have been waiting for does come out, you'll be ready for it. And just to clarify, on the Russian server, I believe they don't give out free jumping tickets like in Korea. I think that on the Russian server, you have to buy them for $5. And while I'm not sure which model North America will follow, whether it's paid or free, we will be getting boosts one way or another. I'm, I'm almost 99% sure, but the same logic kind of applies. Should we talk about class popularity in any? The polls? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. There are, I don't know if you guys go on the Reddit that much, but the, the Lost Ark Reddit loves polls. I see a poll every two days <laughs> about the same stuff. So what's been the top class? So I'm seeing, well, let's go through some of the polls. So Deathblade is near the top. That's the assassin class. Paladin near the top. Shadowhunter, which is demonic on the Korean server. So both of the assassin classes are pretty popular. No surprise there. Paladin as a support, that is kind of surprising. I'm also seeing Berserker, Gunslinger near the top. I think this is just typical NA, right? The the edgiest classes. and Edge lords. Yeah, and... Uh, Paladin kind of makes sense to me because I think people still cling on to the, the Holy Trinity, so Paladin sounds like big tank. Whereas Bard was always, at least in Final Fantasy, Bard was the necessity, or the, the class that was necessary for every raid, but nobody wanted to play. Bards were hella OP in Final Fantasy. Yeah, they were. Didn't Bards have like a mana song? They had a mana song and a healing song, I think. I can't, or no, it was a, a an AP song. I remember my healers were always crying for mana song. From from these polls, are you seeing more of a trend towards the people trying to suss out what the strongest class is? Or do you think this is purely based on like what looks the coolest? Because that's how I picked Gunslinger to play on beta. I, I went on one of the Reddit showcases, uh, class showcases, and was like, oh, th this is the flashiest and most mobile class. I didn't really care how how strong it was from a purely numbers perspective but uh, i just thought gunslinger looked cool as hell and, and that's why i picked her i think it's hard to generalize what it is it's probably mostly a popularity thing also the the results we have to keep in mind are a very small minority of what the actual player base will look like so it's hard to take this as a definitive this will be the most popular class but i think paladin and bard being at the top is not surprising because they're also at the top in korea the numbers are inf are they're not inflated, but uh, you you guys probably have a better way of describing this. But even though Paladin and Bard individually are near the top for a class rank, in terms of actual percentage of player base, they are the the smallest because there's only two support classes and there's fourteen DPS classes. Did you just insinuate that Reddit is not the BL end all uh, representative of the community? That's blasphemy. I know. <laughs> And with how many polls that are coming out on Reddit, I feel like it's just people probing for or, or trying to find out what class they should play themselves because they have no idea. But otherwise, why would you 
poll the subreddit every other day <laughs> with the same question. What's your main? What, or what do you want to be your main? Dude, have you never been on a mobile game subreddit? This is this is their entire bread and butter. This is exactly what I see. I saw all the time when I was part of those communities. Reddit is just like even on on the beta release question, people will come in to this day on on the Lost Ark Reddit and try and like literally have the uh, it's sunny in Philadelphia. They're like fucking pin up board trying to connect <laughs> all these dots, fucking like zeroing in on what the release date is gonna be. Like oh, oh German magazine of uh, Rise QT streamer I, as gold said this blah, blah blah like reddit just loves speculation through and through i mean that's what i'm there for usually especially for mobile games just to to see the memes and and how how deep people go into an analysis and then laugh my ass off because they really went there <laughs> What do you guys think about the relationship between class popularity and how a certain class is perceived in game? I think it's a uh, it's a dangerous one to to ascribe like truth to, but I mean it's kind of like how stereotypes exist in real life. There is a correlation between the type of people that play certain classes and and like how they're how they're portrayed or whatever. Unga Bunga DPS players exist on every single MMO, like who will prioritize getting their rotation off uh, over their survival. And then you have... Call them smooth brains. <laughs> smooth brain. Uh, <laughs> and then you have the healers who are just like these exasperated people for face palming in the background. And then you have the, the tanks who are just like standing there all fearless and, and guiding the raids. So I think there's there's a certain amount of truth to class stereotypes and, and like the people who tend to play them. But as as long as people take it as like something that's fun to poke fun of but not actually generalizing in a toxic way these people all together so what you're saying is americans are going to play gunslinger and only gunslinger <laughs> no please please stay away from from my gunslinger waifu she's she's pure uh you, that was an interesting point but actually i was talking more about back to the meta thing where if you're playing an unpopular class does it affect your chances of getting into a raid or or a public a public group. Oh, I see. I think there's kind of like two answers, or like there's the right answer and the what may happen kind of answer, especially on NA. I think the right thing is no, it shouldn't play into if somebody gets into a raid or not, uh, especially with Lost Ark, because most people should be playing what they like or, or, or they're still trying out a class. So just because you see a 1% popularity class applying to, to your raid doesn't mean you should just kick them out or reject them. But I think what will probably happen is there will be uh, larger polls that uh, sample a larger group of people and the bottom, let's say, three classes will be relegated to sh the shadow realm and people will start getting rejected if they're playing that class and trying to get into a raid just solely based on these popularity polls really you think so i really hope not i, I think it's inevitable i really hope not i hope not too i i think it will happen I don't think that on launch this will happen because as you said, everybody's kind of, they'll be experimenting and like the meta or whatever of whatever launch version we get uh, settles in. But I, I honestly think that a big compass of, of what will happen in terms of people being denied from raids based on the classes that they're playing is how will Amazon slash Smilegate approach the patches? Because Korea has gone through like these different metas and phases where certain classes were stronger than others and then nerfs and, and buffs come along to shuffle that up. So I think if if we get similar frequent shuffle ups, I think that that will help keep people in line in terms of segregating certain classes or not allowing them into raids because most likely people are going to have that experience of being at the top and then getting blasted down to the bottom by nerfs. And if that personally happens to you, I think most people will have the empathy to not do that to another person. But if on the flip side, if we have a very stagnant version, like a patch that that spans like months and months, we may see that that toxicity come out. You have a very positive outlook for the NA gaming community. You don't think that if somebody gets like if their class gets ass blasted, they're going to... <laughs> feel bad for people who, <laughs> who are in the same situation i honestly don't think it'll happen as often as, as you want it to but i am i want it to happen i mean because that's that's just the right thing to do right but <laughs> you want to get ass blasted <laughs> please no <laughs> 
I mean, it's kind of strange, though. I, I, I think it's really hard to... Personally, I can't see the correlation between class popularity and whether or not you actually get into a raid. That's what I wanted to ask you guys. Why would why does it matter if you're playing a a, a very underplayed class? Why do, what does that have any impact on 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 whether you get into a raid or not? Oh, I'm I'm not uh, sorry. I wasn't uh, coming at that from the perspective of popularity polls. I was coming at that from the from the perspective of the tier list that people are going to inevitably make. I don't think it will have much of an impact, but I think given it is going to be end up on Reddit, you will see screenshots of, of people that get rejected at a raid and and some sort of like censored username, and then the message that they got DM saying, "Oh wow, you're playing this two percent class GTFO." <laughs> I think popularity is actually not going to matter that much. So maybe I asked the wrong question because let's be real. Most people, and I mean 90% of people that don't go on Reddit are going to have no idea what the class popularity charts are, right? So I don't think that really matters. Another question though, and this is an, I've actually seen people argue about this is which class would you rather take into a raid? From a raid organizer perspective, right? Do you favor classes that are easier to play or for example there are some classes that are objectively harder to play for like uh, dead eye or, or devil hunter because you're very squishy you have to be in close combat there are less people playing it and looking at the pool i see dead eyes near the bottom not to stereotype it or make any kind of tier list but it is a hard to play class that requires a lot of mechanics and skill so between that and something that is relatively easier to play like a berserker is one the safer choice? And if you're playing a Deadeye, is that a disadvantage for you? Because you might not be able to get into raids as easily. I could see that happening. I could definitely see somebody putting together a pickup group and being like, oh shit, we need to, what reset is coming? We need to clear this within two hours or whatever. Like we ought to make sure that the, that we can do this. And in like, if I were in that case, yeah, I would pick the, the safer choice, the easier to play class. Yeah, I think that's a guarantee. That ha- that's happened in every MMO. Like I was talking about the dragoon earlier in Final Fantasy, there I have literally seen LFGs that said no dragoon, even if they have one DPS slot open. So I think it'll definitely happen. But on the flip side, can you consider that because I don't? Also, I'm not hating on berserkers, right? I mean, some people, <laughs> some of us relate closely to monkeys more than others. But if you're a berserker monkey, <laughs> right, and a lot of new players will, I think, be drawn to the class. Just because it's kind of like an echo chamber. People keep saying, oh, Berserker is easy to play. Berserker is easy to play. And based on the amount of of skill you need to play it, it does good damage and it has good performance, especially in Tier 1. I think Berserkers are going to be sick in Tier 1. There are going to be a lot of new players drawn to the class. So by extension, you know, if you think about the pool of Berserkers in the server, more of people are going to be newbies or or people that are drawn to an easy class. But if you keep hearing, oh, Deadeye is hard to play, Deadeye is hardcore, Deadeye, you need a lot of mechanics, people who like that challenge will play Deadeye. So isn't there something to consider where people who are tryhards might pick a more difficult class and people who maybe are playing more casually might pick an easier class? Not to generalize. If you're a Berserker main, you already know what it is, right? I think that's some like upper tier second level Yomi shit that most uh, raid leaders, especially in pickup groups, aren't going to consider. But I, I don't know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that deeply into it if I was organizing a pug. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the exact same train of thought. I think it's something. It's you're going too deep into it, like saying, oh. This class is very difficult to play. Therefore, the small player base that does play it are probably real good at it. Versus you have a billion Berserker players and most of them are just completely ass at the class. Like, I I don't think a a raid lead or organizer is going to take that into account. Especially if, say, weekly reset's coming, then I feel like they're probably just going to pick the safest thing, which is usually just have a regular group, no matter what the class is. If it's just like a random pickup raid, then honestly, who cares? Just play with whatever classes apply to their raid. Right. And to clarify, this is, um, for me, I'm speaking mostly thinking of the launch and maybe first six months of the of the game when it comes to like t3 t4 rating maybe that's more of a of a consideration you're thinking like 
oh shit, this person's been playing whatever Deadeye or Gunslinger for two years now. If they've gotten this far and cleared up to this point, like they can't be that shit at their class, right? But I think that's more of just baseline competency rather than this person's going to be better than a Berserker. I don't think I would ever use class generalizations to make that call. Really, I just want people's experiences to be in raids to be based on their skills or like their acceptance into raids based on their skill but if it's in a time pressure situation and you don't get you don't have the time to show that skill yeah maybe then that's the this sort of stuff comes into play well it's like in dota when someone picks chen right like a high micro hero <laughs> you know you know that guy fucks like noobs don't pick that hero right well, no, you don't. You don't know that person fucks. You either know that you're go- you're about to have a fucking like puppy level Chen or or some like monkey at the keyboard, right? But I'm trying to argue. I'm trying to argue for 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 class equality. You know, I I really don't want this kind of community to develop where people pick based on classes. But that's kind of why I brought this point up. Is that unfortunately you may be the best dead eye on the goddamn planet, right? Or you may be the worst berserker on the goddamn planet, but you have no way to appraise someone's skill in the party finder window, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I totally agree. So, and then you have to look at their gear and engravings, but assuming both two things are the same, the only thing else you can look at is their class and or, or their, their, their expedition level, which is like your like account level. And I really, I'm afraid that people are going to start taking the class data of oh this class is difficult to play or this class is more demanding on the player and and then start cutting people out even when it doesn't make sense to for example there could be a deadeye who has like really good specs really good gear but he doesn't get accepted just because he's a deadeye i think there's a very good chance it'll happen especially if we're again talking about like need a safe and quick clear i don't think it should why would you discriminate based on the class that they're playing but i don't think it's something that can be avoided Mm -hmm. yeah i think that there'll at least be a bit of this in pugs but probably not statics but then to come to a point that we made last week this game is more pug heavy than static heavy at least in korea yeah, and if you're a, if you're someone who's who who is planning to play Deadeye, I hope you're not suddenly afraid and thinking of re-rolling. Like I said, the class balance in this game is very good, so there's nothing wrong with the class. I think we're talking more about perception and especially about the mentality of North American players. I think EU, I've heard good things about EU. I've never played on it, but I can only speak to NA, where people are very much gravitated to these things that we are familiar with from other games like tier lists class difficulty and things like that so i don't know i want to try to promote an environment where where people can 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 be given a shot it's like when you're trying to get a job and you put in your resume and you don't even make it to the interview at least give everyone an interview you never know right i I hope that it ends up that way too yeah i I honestly i think if like if we're talking about dead eye if you have interest in playing dead eye or if even if you have interest in playing a super challenging class then go for it why not right it's it's something that interests you something that that challenges you then just be the best damn dead eye that you can be and i don't know <laughs> prove these people wrong which is also the premise of of a lot of like manhwa right now of like fantasy and mmorpg manhwa shit tier class player becomes legendary triple s <laughs> Oh god, fucking like what that was a huge thing in the in the battle like battle harem battle school days of oh this guy shows up and he's he's a weak ass but he just rocks everybody with some whatever level 0 skill. Uh back on the point and weeb <laughs> yeah, fucking weebs. Um back on the point uh fuck I lost I completely <laughs> lost what I was going to say. <laughs> fuck my life, dude. I had the I was like re- repeating it in my head and now I I don't have it anymore. No, nah, it's gone. <laughs> Dead eye mains in shambles right now, and from from the like deep and dark abyss of the dead eye shit shitters, there will emerge one champion. Don't say it like that. What do you think about what about DPS paladin? <laughs> Break the meta. Do it. I mean, is it really breaking the meta if the class is? kind of equipped for it in oh fuck i remember my point i remember shut the fuck up i remember my point <laughs> <laughs> i'm not editing that out i'm keeping that in <laughs> god damn it 
Um, okay, I think something that's uh, that the community can can do to help this cause of like making sure that everybody gets a fair shot, and specifically, I would like looking at you as a content creator, make showcases because I'm sure when you when you guys were looking at your tier list or for your tier list, and, and I kind of did the same thing, what I instead came up with a lot was showcases, PvP showcases or raid showcases. And I watched the people play their classes and I was like, oh, this like the, these guys are, are doing Giga Dam. Like this is really cool. And from that perspective, like when I was trying to decide between classes, I saw Solfist and I was like, oh shit, this person just did like a 25 million damage spirit bomb. But then I watched a blade. I'm like, oh, he's just like death by a thousand paper cut style uh, of gameplay. And I think it's really important for content creators to show people what all the classes are capable of if they want all classes to get a fair shake in, in Lost Ark. So what you're saying is be the change you want to see. Yes, exactly. And by by me, I mean you, because I'm not a content creator. <laughs> well, speaking of PvP showcases, why don't we move on to PvP? Uh, we have a lot to talk about PvP. So let me welcome our guests for today. To talk about PvP, I've invited one of my old friends from WoW, Smackles. He's much better at PvP than I am. So Smackles, how are you doing? That, uh, that is me. I'm Smackles. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Can you just tell everyone about kind of what your experience is with MMO and PvP? Sure. I mean, you know, I used to play... Wow, back in the day, like, I guess I started in 2003, played all the way through Vanilla, BC, Wrath, and then a couple more expansions after that on and off, but primarily just those three. And I guess Wrath was my favorite because that's when we were in high school together and that's when it seemed like the game was at its peak, in my opinion. And and that was really when I was at my peak for PvP anyways, so I had the most fun. Yeah, it's been like, you know, 10, 11 years now since that expansion ended. But I still remember it was it was definitely fun times just hanging out with you know, all the different friends and just the competitive aspect of how Arena was at the time during that expansion. It was it was a really, really fun. It was the golden age of arenas, right? Wrath, TBC. Yeah, yeah, I guess those two. Yeah, TBC and Wrath. What's your what was your so what are your achievements in the PvP realm? So I guess Season 8 would have been my peak. I did get Gladiator in Season 8, but I will say, though, that in Season 8, there was the most amount of Gladiators out of any of the Wrath seasons. But we did hit Gladiator across 2s, 3s, and 5s. Despite the fact that 2v2 didn't award the Gladiator title, we were still in, in the top 0.5%. So I think it was just like an accumulation, you know, finding the right teammates over those four seasons. And then season seven, we, we were really good, but not quite there yet. And then season eight, we were top of the chain with, with all the, the other good players. So for those of us who might not play WoW or, or do PvP in WoW, what, what is Gladiator? And like, how, what's, the, what's the proportion of players you have to be in to get Gladiator? Uh, I believe it was top 0.5% of each bracket. So, you know, if there was like a thousand teams competing and eligible, I think there was like a minimum game requirement. But l let's say there was a thousand eligible teams, it would be five, five gladiators. And there would also be a rank one title awarded. And, and obviously that was only for the number one team. That was always the most lucrative and the reason was because that title specifically you kept forever, whereas the gladiator titles, they disappeared after every consecutive, every, every other season. Right, right. And if, and there's a similar system in Lost Ark. The Grandmaster title is, the, the I guess, the equivalent to Gladiator. And you need to keep your rating to keep all of the associated rewards. So there's mounts and, and other things that you can get. But so this is a Lost Ark podcast. Yeah. And you, you know, not you know, almost nothing about Lost Ark, right? I, I mean, I know you're playing and streaming it. That's, a, that's about as, as I know about it. <laughs> yeah. So I think there are a lot of what, what should I call them? WoW refugees who are interested in jumping ship to another MMO. I cannot speak to the state of WoW Arena nowadays, but I know that Lost Ark PvP especially is getting a lot of attention from other MMO players. I'm not even going to talk about Final Fantasy XIV because, as you know, Reinforce and Signum, PvP in that game basically doesn't exist, right? Yeah, it was garbage. I don't think I even touched it. <laughs> I played it for a little bit. It was it was it was not great. But uh, let's talk about Lost Ark PvP. So Smackles, what was kind of I guess your favorite part of PvP in WoW, and what kind of elements do you think a game or MMO needs to have a, a fun or a successful PvP scene? Uh, do you mean just from the PvP aspect? Yeah, PvP balance is is definitely a big one. 
that was one that was always a hot topic. There were always certain comps or certain classes that were maybe a little bit overpowered and overtuned. And, you know, the good thing about WoW and the fact that it's, it was the biggest MMO at the time, I don't know if it still is, but they oh, they used to implement hotfixes whenever something was maybe powerful or any kind of big patch would always include a big rebalance amongst all the classes. And so that would at least create some new level of competition with every single patch because say your class was maybe middle of the pack or or underperforming in relation to the other classes, a big patch comes in and suddenly you might be, you might have the best class or, or the best talent spec, right? So that always created like an interesting dynamic and having to adjust, you know, strategies. So I would say that the balance aspect and keeping things competitive was the most important because if you just always had the same three, you know, the same two classes or the same two compositions, uh, I guess the game would be a little bit stale. And the one thing that I did enjoy was the variety of different classes that performed well. And it was almost like a rock, paper, scissors thing too, where you'd have certain classes uh, certain compositions that did well against others, but poorly against uh, maybe opposition C. And so that created an interesting dynamic too, where there was always a chance for the underdog to win, but it, it kind of made it very difficult. So even though Rock beats Scissors, for example, Scissors, Scissors always had the chance at least even though if it was even if it was five or ten percent and yeah i found that even though some people hated those matchups because they thought that it was just unbeatable i always liked them because it, it's it's that sort of feeling where you know if you beat the comp that you're not supposed to beat you kind of just that feeling the vi victorious feeling you get was unmatched in my opinion like when it came when enhancement shamans became like really really good and it was like bm hunter enhancement shaman it i think it was and and that comp was specifically made to beat rmp and i remember there was there was an mlg matchup where an rmp team had beat the beastmaster team they weren't supposed to it, it was you know everybody had thought that the beastmaster team was obviously going to take the uh, the finals and, and the rmp came from out of nowhere to, to to win the matchup and yeah just just that type of camaraderie and competition was amazing at the time so can i say that you like the ability or you like to have the ability to outplay the other people. Oh yeah, definitely. I guess that's one way to put it. Yeah, I think in Lost Ark as well, and and uh Signum and Reinforce, you guys can chime in on this too. But so let's talk about PvP in Lost Ark. So if you're coming from WoW and you have no idea what to expect and you've heard Lost Ark has good PvP, but you don't really know much about it, or you already know about Lost Ark and you're wondering about PvP. PvP in Lost Ark is equalized. So that means that everyone has the same amount of skill points, everyone has the same amount of stats, everyone has the same gear. Even if you're at new level 50 or you hit max level years ago or whatever, everything is on the same battlefield. So you can never have a, a gear advantage in Lost Ark. Yeah, perfect. That's actually a good point because... One other thing I remember at the time in season eight too was the fact that some of the PVE experts, or I guess the, you know the people that went the farthest with their guilds, they had access to the best gear at the time, and it created a little bit of an edge, even if it was you know a two, three, four, five percent edge. When you're f vying for those like top three spots or 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 rank one spot, just that little piece of gear is going to put you over the edge. So it's pretty cool that yeah, Lost Ark, it's e even playing field for everyone because that was that was a big issue I, I remember at the time. And also, so, so, okay, so there's a lot to unpack here because PvP is, is a big subject. We can talk about comps, gear, all that stuff, but let's try to go one at a time. And let's, let's talk about comps first. So this is composition is, you know, what is on your team. Lost Ark has 3v3 arenas, just like WoW, but it's a very different game mode because... And WoW players get ready for to be shocked. You might you might be in disgust. You might want to throw up. But there are no pre-mates in Lost Ark Arenas. So the 3v3 game mode has only solo queue, which means that you queue up by yourself and you get put in a team with two random teammates and you fight against three other players. What what do you think about that? Because Lost uh, WoW Arenas 3v3 is all about pre-mates. It's all about the comms, finding the right teammates, making the calls on Discord coordinating in lost ark you have to do that with people you can't communicate with right on voice unless you somehow are in the discord beforehand and you match up together and you have to play with different comps every time is this 3v3 or is it three 1v1s so there's two different modes there's there's three there's a what there's a last team standing where you duel one at a time and then 
if you survive, you face the next person on the roster, and the last team standing wins. And there's also traditional 3v3 arenas, which is three versus three at the same time. I think that kind of sucks if it's 3v3. <laughs> um how does it work i guess if do they not match you with the same class so that you wouldn't have like three healers for example i th i think there is some kind of waiting so if if you don't have a support i think it tries to put a support on your team but you also get queued into double healer comps or or triple range or triple melee kind of wizard cleave comps Right, so I think it's it is something that I haven't seen in any other MMOs because I, right away it it removes two things that are kind of bad about other systems with premades is that there's no boosting and there's no win trading, right? Because you cannot coordinate in a premade. Yeah, but from like an objective PvP standpoint, I think it's it's pretty bad not having three v three premades. Yeah, I I totally agree. It, it, one of the things about a team game is communication, right? If, you, if you're just going to be put into a bunch of, a team of randoms and you can't really communicate with each other to coordinate or what have you, that takes away a lot of the competitive aspect of it. And being an NA Dota player, <laughs> solo queue can get very toxic. Mm -hmm. I guess, is have the developers ever clarified their stance on why it is the way it is like do they do that because they don't want certain three comps like threes comps to become dominant or or like perhaps they even know that if they were to open up pre-mades that certain compositions would become virtually undefeatable i mean it's, it's, it's like smackle said right comps are people will quickly find the best comps and the best case scenario is a rock paper scissors scenario there will be mm -hmm. three best comps and which will all exist to counter each other and that is the reason that a lot of the thing the devs have said or at least i see a lot of the players saying this is that if there were pre-made queues people would just play meta comps and right now in Lost Ark PvP, you can get to the top with any class just because of this random random nature. And and I want to clarify that there are 3v3 pre-mates. You can play 3v3 arena with your friends. It just isn't in ranked queue, so you won't get MMR for it. You will still get PvP tokens, which you can use to exchange for items and stuff. But the ranked mode where you, you gain MMR, that is solo queue only. So how how does, um like... How does the MMR system work? Because I think that you're you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Because if you have a system where, um, in general, a good player will trend um, upwards, then you just have MMR inflation and you have a situation where the people who are at the top of the ladder aren't the best PvPers, they're the people who play the most. Um, and then on the flip side, if it's too punishing to losses um and you can go negative then i can see a lot of people getting tilted because um their mmr is at the mercy of the two people that you queue with uh i guess league of legends players would call this elo hell i think it works the same as any other mmr based game right if you're good you'll make it out of bronze or elo hell and if you're and if you're not good chances are if 10 games in a row you lose the most consistent factor is you right I think there's always going to be a way to to sort of scam the system though because for example you could team like queue snipe try to queue at the same time things like that i remember in wow there was sort of one way to boost rating on new characters and actually this was a way that teams were cheating to climb ladders because what happened was there was you know each character would have their own mmr because at one point it was it was team bound mmr so you signed like a roster and if you left the team your mmr would be reset to 1500 eventually they made it player bound not team bound so you could have two players with like 3000 mmrs which was like say rank one they would get a 1500 a fresh account person or character to join the team that would drop their cumulative average team mmr to say 2200 they would get queued against worse teams and although they would only win like maybe one point on their total team MMR, it would still be an advantage for them because they'd be able to chip away and increase their total MMR, despite the fact that their own MMRs were like 3,000. Yeah, I've seen this exploitation in Apex Legends. People, have, There was a patch where people were doing the exact same thing. 
Mm. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Like, if there's a way to game a ranking system, people will do it. Oh, yeah, people, of course, yeah. I think that that's all that's that is true but at least it's much harder even in the wow scenario right that exploit works because it's a team pre-made queue if you're queuing solo and you only have your solo mmr it becomes a lot harder to even queue snipe because you don't even know if you'll end up on the same team if you're win trading there's six individual slots and and you have to get into it but that aside i mean i think that's not really the main focus of, of what I want to really talk about here. I want to really focus on actually the gameplay. So 3v3 pre I I want to go back to Reinforce's point. I think you're totally right that not having the communication in ranked queues, that's a big shock, I think, to WoW players. Right, Smackles? Can you imagine queuing 3v3 arenas, but you only queue with randoms? Yeah, I guess you, they kind of had that with unranked matches. I mean, to practice, sometimes people would just kind of queue those unranked matches on their own. They'd get queued with randoms. And a lot of times, it's like if you're the best player, you end up having to try to carry your team and almost like 3v1 or pick people off while your other two teammates are distractions. So it's a completely different game than when you have a, a comp that's predetermined with your teammates. Yeah, I think it completely changes the way that a that a game is played. Like if I were in if I were playing a PvP match and I knew that the other three people weren't communicating, like you can be more aggressive, right? Because you don't you don't have that expectation that a teammate on the other team is going to know that that person is under pressure and peel for them or something, right? Like you're just you can tunnel vision on somebody because they have no way of communicating their desperation to their teammates. Well, you're assuming they're bad because grandmaster players will absolutely destroy you if you go in alone, and and and, and they will peel and, and and CC. So it's another thing too that I mean, especially reinforce you. You're playing Dota recently. When you're solo queuing in Dota before they implemented this the new solo queue system, if you run into a pre made of a five stack. You're, you're you're automatically at a disadvantage, right? You basically just give up that match, <laughs> usually, right? Imagine a team of five solo queues versus a, a a stack of five. There's no way unless that stack is super bad. Well, I mean, you could take five really good players that don't know each other, and then five terrible players that all know each other. I'll I'll put my money on the five <laughs> good players that don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But I think the other thing that Dota and some of the other uh, competitive game team games that have going for them is there's a built-in voice chat system, right? So even if you're a solo queue, you can still communicate to each other and scream at each other on the mic that you're you're about to get three v one somewhere bot lane. Start pinging. But that doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> start spamming your ping. <laughs> ping. Ping 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 ping. Well, okay. So well, that point was. Basically saying that. Well, in anyway, that's a it's a moot point in Lost Ark because as a solo queuer, you can only run into solo queues. So at least that part is yes. is neutralized. You have no chance of running into a three stack when you're solo queuing. And you bring up a good point about voice chat because while it doesn't exist in the Korean server, the NA server has built in voice chat. We tested it in the alpha, and the sound quality was absolute dog shit. Oh my god, it was awful. But the, the function is there. The function exists. So if they just make it sound a little bit better. It will be good, and and that will that will introduce a whole new element to to PvP, especially that that doesn't exist on the Korean server because Koreans, you get into a match and you just you just have to coordinate with your friends. You have to have really high game awareness, and and because there's no comms, right? But in NA, we'll have built-in voice chat. Is it confirmed that the built-in voice chat is going to work uh, in PvP as well? It's, nothing is confirmed because we're still waiting for the beta. <laughs> okay. Maybe if it remains being bad, then you just set up some like some like I don't know noises beforehand. Well, that are well established. Like if you bark like a dog, then you need help or what something ridiculous hell? like that. Oh jeez, <laughs> Jesus! But talking about comps though, how how significant uh, were team comps in WoW arenas, Smackles? Yeah, like I said before, I mean, although WoW tried to be as balanced as possible, there were there were always the best comps. Usually they revolved around certain classes that might have been overpowered within certain patches. So yeah, team comps were very important, but there were always kind of the staples like Rogue Mage Priest RMP was just always good, regardless of season, regardless of patch almost. Rogue Lock was always a good combo. Rogue Mage, Warrior, Warlock, Healer. And then what was interesting was season nine and onwards, and and that's when I think the game got a little bit worse. They started to implement way too many viable classes. So like Paladins Season 8 and, and before, 
were really only good as healers. Um, for example, druids, they were really only good as healers. Fast forward to season nine and onwards, you suddenly have feral druids that are a thing. You have, have balanced druids that are a thing. So all the respects become viable. So, uh, you know, kind of as a pro, yeah, you have a variety of more comps and suddenly it maybe it's more fun because you don't run into the same comps all the time but the downside of that is is the fact that i i think it made it less fun at least for me because it made it less competitive i think i just remember season eight and season nine a lot of people really liked the simplicity that season eight brought with the fact that certain classes had their positions and, and their roles and it just made it seemed like it made the game more fluid so um, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, so we actually had a huge discussion about that earlier. We we're talking about class mm -hmm. balance and I guess tier lists and, and what classes are good. We also talked about Holy Trinity. And because in this game there are no traditional healers, tanks, and DPS. Well there are DPS, obviously, but there's not the traditional triangle. And we talked about how some people might not like that generalization because you don't feel that you have a specific role anymore. Just like in PvP or WoW, like a Frost Mage was like the team's controller and, and the CC machine and you kind of direct everyone, right? So let's talk about tier list then. So in, in Lost Ark PvP, there's absolutely a tier list and some classes are definitely better at certain things. You're talking about, so was there a big discrepancy between classes and specs in Arena? before season nine and, and and why why is that a good thing or a, or a bad thing is that, that that some classes are just not viable well personally like i said i thought it was a good thing because it made the game a little bit more fluid you know you you went into the arena kind of knowing what matchups you're playing against and and, and how to play against them and in, in bc it was even more simple than that i mean you really only had a handful of viable comps right i think that wrath kind of had the correct balance whereas bc was just too plain there were there was really only like three or four viable comps and then in um season nine and beyond you had literally every single spec could have been technically like a viable spec to play with and, and it was just too much because there were too many different abilities going on within any given patch you would have suddenly some random spec become way too overpowered and suddenly the arena would be focused around building comps that included that specific spec. So at one time it would have been like Fire Mage or, or Feral Druid or Boomkin, because for example, at any point in any certain patch, that might've been the overpowered class. And you would just see literally only that spec within like 50% of the matchups. And it got a little bit annoying. I, I kind of enjoyed that aspect a little bit more where you had like rock, paper, scissors, but maybe 10 different rock, paper, scissors. And it was sort of a cycle of knowing the different strategies that you would need to implement against those comps and who could execute those strategies the best, rather than you'll enter an arena and, and suddenly you just, you know that you don't even have a chance because you're up against a certain spec that's way too overpowered. So too much is, is kind of a bad thing. And I think I, I see where you're coming from is that you're, you, you keep going, I think you're talking from a, a chance where you really like to be able to outplay your opponents. And I think most people who PvP in any game at a, at, a top, at the top level, they want to be able to outplay your opponents. But just like Apex with the new hero that come out, you know, if it's stupidly broken and, and they just add some new stuff in, then it, that, that very consistent battlefield where you're used to everyone being approximately the same and you can outplay suddenly becomes a chaotic mess and especially signum like you play you play melee right so there's a handful of characters that you know all your matchups against but if suddenly there's 100 characters 200 characters and they all have different matchups it does that become too much yeah for sure i was actually going to make the parallel between what michaels was saying and melee versus something like like ultimate um in melee there is this defined top tier of pretty much eight characters that are viable tournament winning characters versus something like smash ultimate yeah the tagline of oh everybody's here roster of i god i don't even know like 80 characters or something it's it's cool to play and um, from a casual perspective, it was a lot of fun. But then the the competitive scene I saw didn't have that same sort of centralization of like the meta where where you could really see certain matchups becoming the like poster child uh, 
of the game. If you load up Melee, there have been certain eras where it, was, it would be like Fox versus Jigglypuff at the top or Fox versus Marth. But if you load up any given Ultimate tournament, you could see any of the two characters on screen at any time. And while that's cool from a marketing perspective, I think for the competitors, it's it's rather difficult. And you see that in Ultimate where the upper echelon of Smash Ultimate players is more of a compilation of like 20 players versus Melee where you have the, the five people at the top. And it is that sense of like, at a certain point when you have that many matchups to learn and that many things that can differ in your gameplay versus any other given character or in MMO terms, uh, compositions, you're not really playing the person anymore. You're playing the comp. And there have been cases where wins have come out of matchup uh, infamiliarity or unfamiliarity. And to me, that's kind of unfortunate because comp competition in video games has always been at its best, in my opinion, when it's an expression of the player rather than an expression of, uh, of the characters. And I think when you have too much, too big of a cast, it becomes an expression of the characters rather than the, the person behind it. Yeah, and I think so. Let's, let's bring it back a bit and talk about Lost Ark. Because I think, although there are a lot of good parallels to other games, we we people are still interested in hearing about Lost Ark. So in general, and this is coming from the Grandmaster tier in Korea, that this is stuff that they've actually said, is that among the DPS classes, there is a pretty good balance in the game. So you don't necessarily favor one DPS class over another. For example, in WoW, back in the day, if you were a mage, you were 100% Frost. And maybe there was like, 10 mages uh, that were arcane or fire that were just like in some troll comp but in classic arenas correct me if i'm wrong snackles but like you were you had to be one spec one class and any other class or spec you were just gimping yourself or trolling yeah pretty much i mean uh like i said season eight and prior so wrath there was like for mage yeah frost would be really the the cookie cutter spec there were some really good arcane mages at the time but it was still sort of niche and there was absolutely no fire but as the expansions went on, all of the different talent trees became viable. And and to some prior points, it, it sort of just made it uh, too much to handle as far as from a competitive perspective. Because, you know, you're not, like, like you guys said, you're not playing the, the players anymore. You're playing the comps. And I think a lot of the nostalgic moments in WoW were in BC and in Wrath when you had the same matchups play against each other. And it was more of who could outplay each other, who could make that quick reaction move like vanishing the death coil or vanishing the blind and that might be you know really niche wow terminology but really outplaying your opponents with the same classes and same specs is i think what made it so special at the time yeah and and i i definitely agree i think that people who pvp really love the chance to pull off that clutch play that highlight real move that outplay that seals the win right so to that note, I think I think it's good that all of the DPS classes are, are somewhat balanced. So you don't have some some major problem point where you walk out of the gate and you just lose based on your comp or you just win based on your comp. Because all the DPSs are are somewhat equalized. They they play differently, but there's not really something that hard counters another thing it's it's more of a, a team game and and another huge difference from wow arenas and lost ark arenas is that in lost ark arenas you respawn when you die after a certain point and every time you get a kill you get one point and, and it's actually a point tally system in wow when you die you die you're dead and the point is to eliminate the other team so to me wow is more of like a waiting game where you kind of poke at each other and then eventually you coordinate some huge line of skills and cooldowns to cc perfectly and get that one kill that that makes it a 3v2 and wins the game in lost ark it's more similar, actually, I think, to Dota, where each team pokes back and forth or, or a fighting game where you kind of play footsies with each other and then you you coordinate a push when your cooldowns are out and you try to steamroll an advantage like that. So what do you think about respawning in arenas? And if, if, if that was coming from a WoW perspective, is that is that something that's crazy or, or would that make it fun? I, I mean, yeah, I guess it's comp dependent, but what really made arenas fun for me as opposed to like Battlegrounds where you could respawn was was that ultimate thrill of it's like sudden death you can't die that's what was the best aspect of it uh, if you if you could respawn in arenas and it was like a tally point system i think it would be a little bit more similar to battlegrounds and it I just don't think it would have the same allure whereas 
the way that they had it with sudden death, if you die, you're dead, it made it a, a lot more competitive, at least for me, in, in my opinion. It sort of reminds me of like maybe a, a shooting game like Counter-Strike where you, you play like a series of 11 rounds and it's who wins the most rounds. So when you think about WoW Arenas and, and when they were competitive, so at BlizzCon, for example, you would play like a best of five and if you lost a certain matchup, or within one matchup it's like if you're dead you're dead and you move on to the next game and it just made the intensity a lot stronger in my opinion yeah i i i I tend to agree so i think that for wow players coming or thinking about coming to lost ark that will be one of the major differences that you will have to get used to because it's a very different thing and i i wasn't very great at it but i did play wow arenas and the sudden death feels really different from what you get in lost ark where it's not about getting that one kill necessarily but it's about positioning and making sure your team is always in a favorable position because you maybe get that one kill but if you're in a bad place the other team will turn around and kill you right back and then the score is one to one so it's kind of about maintaining your advantage while also not giving away too much so it it becomes more like a fighting game in that sense where you might get you might lose your stock but the other person's at uh 200 you could you respawn and you just kill them and then it's back to even you never know what maybe lost ark will implement a sudden death type of arena i think if they did that the arena would have to be expanded on a lot more because right now from what i've seen the maps don't really differ that much from each other and uh they're all pretty small i mean the wow arenas were pretty Pretty much like that too, just tiny little cram you into a circle with some pillars. I think so. Let's talk about how the games are balanced because I correct me if I'm wrong, but in WoW, PVE balance also affects PvP, right? Yes, yeah, kind of like I mentioned before, depending on the patch at the time, if they needed to rebalance a certain class because they were doing too well in PvE, maybe they were topping the damage charts too much or. From a healing perspective, maybe they the healing was just overtuned a little bit. Whenever those would get patched, that would definitely have recourse into PvP as well. There was always complaints from either side. If there was a, a PvE tune that it would affect PvP, or if there was a PvP tune that it would affect PvE. Yeah, and and I I remember that I was a hardcore PvE monkey in in wow and and we would always i would so we were kind of on on different sides of that and i that was always a big point of dispute for players because if you're a pvp player well they change something because of pve but it really has like it really messed up your comp or, or whatever and vice versa in lost ark the pvp and pve skills are actually different so the same skill has different effects and different tuning than it does in pve so if you hold alt you get to see the pvp tooltip so it's actually balanced separately. Yeah, I mean, if the game creators are able to constantly stay on top of balancing for PvE and PvP and just separate them, kudos to them. I mean, maybe that's a better way to do it. It just seems like it's a lot more work. <laughs> but but at the same time, it's it makes sense. How much? Uh, how often did the meta or the balancing change in, in in WoW? I was always a PvE or so I never paid too much attention to it. So, but the did the PvP comps or the meta or the balancing change frequently? Well, you would always have at least one major patch within a season that would completely 180 things around. You might be a top five team on your ladder and suddenly get hit with a patch that that completely makes your comp not even playable. That would be a huge hit to you if you were grinding for a rank one, for example. And that would usually happen once every season. And then, of course, when the seasons rolled over, you would have the biggest patches because that with every new season, usually there was also some sort of new dungeon that got released or some new raid and that would in turn create new comps every single season that dominated i'm not even sure what would be best i think that i'd rather have less changes that if if it's stable than frequent changes just to shake up the meta yeah i agree um too heavy-handed tweaking from the developers uh, doesn't allow for like emergent meta, I guess you would call it. If you think about the greatest competitive games, in, in my opinion, which would be like Melee and StarCraft, or even Dota for for a long time, although Icefrog does patch uh, quite a bit, they they were pretty static, and it allowed people to 
really dig deep and perfect the like singular meta that you had to work with because there was no help from the developer coming if you couldn't do something and you wanted to bring your character up or, or whatever you like you had to put in the work and find a way to to break past that barrier and i think that's where the best games shine like i don't know i think too much tweaking it just creates too much of a flavor of the month sort of things and like constant constantly having to relearn new characters if your character gets dumpstered it makes people lose a sense of identity imagine you're the best gunslinger player right and then they completely shit on gunslinger well now you have to pivot to another class uh, even if you don't like it and even from like a legacy standpoint that that damages i guess the brand of a player or the identity of a player if they really want to be like oh i want to be the gunslinger and then gunslinger gets gets shafted like what what do they even do at that point yeah i mean i'd agree that the more consistent consistency there is and less change the better of a chance every single person has at sort of establishing their name as the best at what they do if there's too many changes there's too many variables and then all of a sudden, like you said, you might have to change your class or, or adapt in some sort of other certain way and kind of takes away from, from the skill set. Yeah, and I think as a spectator, it, if uh, Lost Ark is going to have some become some sort of spectator PvP, it's more engaging to, in my opinion, to watch a meta develop than read the patch notes and then know what the meta is because that's what the developers wanted. There, there's just like something about like watching the... The players just work on the craft and, and, and develop the meta themselves. That's just way better as, as a spectator than having the developers tell you this class is now top, please play it. Yeah, and I think going like further onto the spectator point of view, it is more hype to have people who, who are iconic like that. Like if you think about fighting games, right? You have somebody like Daigo who only ever played Shoto characters. Like he was Ryu, he was Ken. He only played Shotos. And in Street Fighter V, like he tried to make Shotos work, but they, they really didn't for a time. I don't know if they ever came to prominence later on, but that sort of branding and ability to make a name for yourself, uh, as Smackle said, is lost if every month or two you you have to switch switch gears and and swap to a different character or, or a different comp or something like that right it's like the identity of the players gets lost so it's almost funny in a way because lost ark is right now the top mmo in korea and it's one of the top 10 most popular games in general which is putting out the same tier as league of legends and some other massive games and lost ark right now is experiencing this huge boom in popularity mostly because of the success of their pve content so the raids in lost ark are extremely fun extremely well designed mechanics are wild and i don't know if if it's a byproduct of that i think it is because the developers have to focus on pve because that is what is pushing the lost ark train forward right now and as a byproduct of that the pvp scene doesn't get touched very often so we kind of talked about how that could actually be a good thing if the patch is in a stable place, if the meta is pretty well balanced. And I think it is. And most grandmasters or PvP players right now are, are satisfied with the state of the meta. So we're in this kind of weird bubble where everything just kind of works and there's not too much as we as we talked about. So when you mentioned that because if if PvE is working and, and there's no complaints and everything's smooth, they probably won't alter anything on the PvP side, even if there are complaints, because uh, one thing I remember remember from WoW is PvP is is not what the game revolved around. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was it was one aspect, but for ninety five percent of the player base, PvE was the go to. If everything was flowing correctly and the mechanics were all good and nothing was too overpowered or underpowered, they just wouldn't touch PvP. And no matter how many PvPers complained and how many forum complaints there were, if if PvE was operating like it had to. PvP had to suffer, or certain classes had to suffer. Yeah, and I think Lost Ark is kind of in a similar situation where PvE is doing really well, and the PvP scene is is pretty healthy. The developers have said we we want to do stuff with PvP. We wanna we want to get so they're they're actually working on a on a open continent that's world PvP enabled, not just one single island like we have. They want to do more stuff with PvP, but just because of how well PvE is doing. PvE is absolutely exploding right now, so they kind of don't have resources to devote to it yet, but 
update. It's not like Final Fantasy XIV where Square Enix basically said, here's PvP, but it's the unwanted like bastard child. We don't talk about PvP. Because, I mean, you know, if you think about WoW, it's not like they had it correct off the, the first year or the second year. It took years and years before they implemented Arena and found a competitive aspect within the game. So there's always going to be an opportunity for Lost Ark to figure out how to create a better competitive environment if they wanted to. And I think they're trying to at least set up the tools for it to flourish. Because if you do Lost Ark PvP and you look at the spectator UI, even in-game and you're not playing, you, you have a very good spectator UI with both teams' health bars. You can see all the cooldowns and all the abilities. As people use the abilities, you can see their abilities flash on screen. It's what we had in WoW MLG back in the day after they figured out, oh, we got to up the production quality. So it, they already have that built in in-game. And they have pre-made 3v3 tournaments for cash. It was broadcast on TV in Korea. You know the scene in the, where they go to the stadium and the lights shine up and, and there's all the people sitting there. So PvP, I feel like they want to make it a thing in Lost Ark. And especially knowing NA and EU, we love PvP. So <laughs> yeah, we do. there will be, even though we talked about in ranked in-game 3v3, there's no pre-made. Community run tournaments stuff like MLG, third-party tournaments, 100% it's going to be pre-made. So that's going to be the pinnacle of skill, right? In-game is whatever. Even in WoW, you could grind in-game, but if you were really hardcore, you would play for cash. You would play in MLG, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I think if they've put this much effort into the spectator mode, it's pretty safe to say that they'll probably be improving PvP, and this is not its final form. Mm -hmm. T to that point, Ayu, you're kind of more connected into the... Uh the Lost Ark community right now, especially on, on Twitch as you're a streamer, do you see Korean Lost Ark streamers that are able to to like carve a niche for themselves primarily playing PvP? Yeah, for sure. Like uh, one of the more famous grandmasters, Typhoon, he streams on Twitch and he has, a, he has a big following. And I think it's similar to other games, especially like WoW, where most people play PvE, but the people who do play PvP are hardcore PvPers. Like they'll play PvE but only if it helps them in PvP. And in Lost Ark, it doesn't. And I think that that's kind of what creates a PvP scene, right? When I go into PvP, I get dumpstered because I play PvE and then I only do PvP occasionally. The other people there, they're on that stuff 24-7. So I guess there is kind of a barrier to entry. And within the PvP scene, the people who are good all know each other. They all know who's good. One thing to build on that point it's funny you mentioned, you know, knowing who's good or playing with friends that are good. I guess there was always I found this kind of sense of like fake it or make it in WoW. Because if you didn't have friends that were good, the only way to improve was to play with teammates that were better than you. And I found that to be true for so many people, including myself. If you wanted to get better at competitive arena or whatever the competitive niche was in the game, you had to find teammates that were better than you. And then, and then slowly just continue to find teammates that are better, continue to find teammates that are better as your own MMR increases until eventually you're sort of on the same level playing field. Because if everyone is the same as you that you're playing with, for example, your friends, unless you collectively put in the time to get better, it's very, very difficult to actually work on your game unless you're learning from someone that's better, right? Yeah, my, my experience playing competitive FPS uh, mirrors that exactly. Like you have to find teammates that are either willing to mentor you or drag your ass through the mud until you get good enough to, to hang with them. Exactly. Yeah. What about getting dumpstered by people who are better than you? Uh, it has its limits. If if they're a bit better than you, then that's the best way to learn. If they're so much better than you that you don't even know what they're doing, then it's completely useless and you're just getting stomped on and wasting both of uh, your times. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a... Just one pip above. If you could play with teammates that are just one pip better, you will get better. And then slowly you sort of one pip up, one pip up, whether it's finding new teammates. Um, that's how to, kind of how I found I improved anyways. So I think that does everything has its place in Lost Ark. So you actually can queue pre-made 3v3s unranked. And I think that opens up an avenue where you can find people who are better than you and mentor you. And they can actually go in and teach you in 3v3 because it's not ranked, they have nothing to lose. Whereas in WoW Arenas, well, if you queue unranked, you can't, I don't think you can queue as a pre-mate. And if you want to queue as a pre-mate, it has to be ranked. So you kind of have to fake it 
and you have to lie on your resume and say, hey, I'm actually better than I say I am. Please teach me stuff. In Lost Ark, you can just play unranked with your friends or with people who want to mentor you. And then when you want to step into ranked, you queue by yourself and it's purely based on your own skill. Does uh, pre-made 3v3 and Lost Ark have hidden MMR or is it just completely random? Like you could be against a team of three Grandmasters or against a team of three people who, who haven't played PvP once in their life? There is some matching algorithm, but like with any matching game, if there's not enough people in the queue, it will start to expand the margin. So you could face Grandmasters as a gold player if there's not enough people queuing. Let's, uh, we're, we're getting kind of to the end uh, of this, but I want to just talk about the play style a little bit about Lost Ark. There's, there's a whole, we could do a whole different podcast on PvP, so maybe we'll keep it short for today, but PvP in Lost Ark is pretty crazy. It it's almost reminds me of a fighting game more than an MMO, because the CC in Lost Ark is so dependent on what your character is doing, and there, and there's different kinds of CC, so there's paralysis or or there's a regular hit stun which is if you get hit by an attack while your character is doing nothing or if your character is just moving you'll actually get stunned and 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 you'll like your character will flinch basically and in that hit stun you can get launched into other combos or ccs but the thing with that is that if you're just auto attacking you can actually go through regular hit stun because your character is in an animation and because your character is in an animation when you get when you get hit you don't go into that hit stun animation so if you get are about to get hit you can actually do an auto attack and and actually go through that that hit stun so there's different levels of cc in the game which really you need to have really fast reactions and it reminds me more of a fighting game where you have to react and do like a parry or a guard or 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 whatever given what we have kind of talked about and, and your limited knowledge of lost ark do you think that it is something that a lot of wild players could enjoy or or is it just fundamentally too different i will say that back when I was really into WoW. I know that a lot of people were always looking for that next MMO to at least give a shot, right? Uh, I don't know if that's the case now. I- I'd imagine that there's less people playing WoW than there there was 10 years ago. But there's always people looking for that next MMO to sort of be the next WoW because I think that at the time that was what every game was striving to achieve. If I was playing right now, I, I wouldn't mind giving it a shot. I mean, like I said, I think there's just always people looking for that next sort of competitive MMO. And I don't know how many of those there are floating around right now. Zero, right? Yeah, honestly, the MMO genre as a whole is uh, pretty scarce nowadays. Yeah, so I mean, in that case, it, it, if a name like Lost Ark starts to pop up, I'm sure it'll draw an audience and a lot of that audience might come from WoW. If there's no competition, then then Lost Ark is in a good spot right now. Well, I'm a I'm a Lost Ark shill, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> say play Lost play Lost Ark. It's from a PvP perspective. I think we're gonna have to go deep on this another day because we're we're way over time. I think not that we have a time limit, but PvP I think is a huge topic and there's a lot to go over. But for now, we can establish that it has a lot of things that are different from WoW. But I also think that to sum it up, it addresses a lot of problem points that WoW arenas had. And not just WoW arenas, but other MMOs with the equalized gear, the kind of safe meta where everything is, is pretty much viable, but there's not too much to mess up. There's It's not too chaotic. And I think it also adds a whole new element of of kind of fighting game elements where you need a lot of reflexes, quick reads. You need to be able to recognize, oh, that person's stuck in an animation so you can punish or, and and whatnot. So for now, what, what, anything you guys want to add? We're going to get dumpster by like 12-year-olds with god-tier reflexes. Time to play more Dota. I'm not playing PvP. I'm gonna, I already know I'm going to get dumpster. So... Uh, that, that's, that's like the biggest reason that I, I refrain from getting back into competitive gaming. I know I'm just going to get destroyed because I'm so far behind now. Hey, it's a, it's a fresh start. People, it's, it's one thing. So the people will make a new meta in NA. So people are already looking at Korea tier lists and, and whatnot, but you know, regions have always had historically different metas. Like in, in WoW, I remember the Koreans, the Chinese, the Europeans and, and us and, and the NA kids, we all play different times, different comps. Like, the Koreans were always super aggressive. They played, like, really crazy comps that we would never play. So I think NA will develop its own meta, and it'll be interesting to see how how that turns out. So if you're interested in PvP, leave us a comment, and we'll go into a deep dive on just PvP, because there is a lot more to unpack than 
maybe we initially anticipated. Lots to talk about. For now, thanks, Smackles, for joining in. Anything you want to leave the audience with? Promote your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. Check me out. YouTube.com slash The Money Mind. We'll have content coming again here shortly. Our website's live, cheddar-hq.com. And thank you for having me. And and just in case you didn't know, it's not a it's not a wow YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's completely in a different uh, vertical. Yeah, uh, it's you went from farming MMR to farming money in real life through stocks. So if you're interested in stocks, go check out his stuff. I'll leave it in the description below. Signo, reinforce. What about you guys? Closing words. Uh, not much to say. I'm just really hoping that uh, Amazon releases a beta start date soon. Because as much as I love PoE, I'm really sick of dying and I'm really sick of playing totems. For me, all this PvP talk has got and and the talk about getting older and reflexes is just making me think I need to start playing more Dota, <laughs> just to build up more thought speed, thought speed, brain processing speed. That's a hellhole <laughs> I'm not falling you into, man. Not again. I will say though that this podcast kind of tickled my video game fancy a bit. I might have to load up a game of Hearthstone. Nice, yo! Check out my stream. Maybe you can uh, play some casual arenas with us later on. Oh, you guys will have to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but this was Lost Ark Waiting Room Episode 2, and we are still waiting for Lost Ark, and that won't change for some time. But if you listened all the way to the end, thanks for tuning in. This has been Ayu, and until next time, bye you.